Hunter Biden is a victim. He's been victimized by now the IRS. In addition to the DOJ and all of these other unfair attacks from these mean Republicans, now his daddy's IRS has violated his rights. And so he's suing them because that's what he does. He's basically a big man child who's just a giant crybaby who just pounds the table every time he's in a little bit of a bind. But why not go after the IRS? Remember, his daddy runs the IRS. Maybe he'll get a nice settlement out of this and maybe they can leverage this into some benefit for his criminal cases now that Congress is starting to look into it. So Hunter filed a lawsuit. We'll take a look at it. Then we've got reaction from the whistleblowers. He's gonna be claiming that they're all liars, essentially. They're all manipulating the data and blah, 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 breaking the law. And so we'll see what they say. James Comer is going to come out. He's got reactions. He says, look, I don't care if they're suing us this way or that way. We're going after their bank accounts, Joe's and Hunter's, and we're going to get evidence of the Venmo transactions if that's what it's going to take. So we'll go through all of it. Let's hit the highlights of the lawsuit. This is what the first son, so-called, uh, this guy is doing. He's literally suing the IRS like a big baby. He says on 27 pages that he is going to be demanding declaratory relief and damages. He wants some money, probably for more crack and hookers. Here's what, or cocaine in the White House. Here's the complaint. It's suing the IRS, right? So this is the first son, Biden, suing his own daddy's IRS. They say plaintiff here, Hunter, by his lawyer is now suing the IRS, seeking a redress for the following items. One, unlawful disclosure of Hunty's tax returns in violation of the law. And of course, we're gonna look at these. These are whistleblowers who made whistleblower protected disclosures to Congress. And two, willful and intentional failure to establish safeguards over the IRS record system to make sure Hunter's confidential tax returns were protected. Hunter's tax returns are protected. So they're very upset that a whistleblower followed the whistleblower laws and blew the whistle on them. And then that they were able to see all of his criminal intent. They say, Mr. Biden is the son of the president of the United States. Of course he is. This is why this is so pathetic. Could you imagine if like Don Jr. was suing the IRS, what they would say about this, what the media would do? They would be twisting themselves into a pretzel trying to say what a bizarre, weird situation this is. The son of the president is suing his own government, is suing the president's government. Okay. He has all, like that's a normal family type of a thing or what's going on here? It's just strange. He has all the same responsibilities as every other American citizen and the IRS can and should make certain that he abides by those responsibilities. Okay, that's true. Similarly, Mr. Biden has no fewer or lesser rights than any other American citizen and no government agency or government agent has free reign to violate his rights simply because of who he is. Again, nobody's saying that he did that. The whistleblowers went to Congress to the House Ways and Means Committee and they communicated with them under the protection of the law. All right. But he says, yet the IRS and its agents have conducted themselves under a presumption that the rights that apply to every other American don't apply to Hunty Poo. This lawsuit is not about the legitimacy of the IRS investigation into Biden over the last five years or any decision to penalize Biden. This lawsuit is not about the proper workings of the whistleblower statute. Rather, the lawsuit is about the decision by IRS employees, namely the whistleblowers, their representatives, people in Congress, their lawyers, and others, and their disregard to intentionally publicly disclose Hunty's protected tax returns outside what is lawful. All right, so they're going after everybody now, right? They're saying that IRS employees, Gary Shapley, Joseph Z, you guys are on notice, bringing them into compliance, right? Don't you dare even think about blowing the whistle. If you're a whistleblower, you're going to be in hot water. You might also be violating the law. In Congress, you're also violating the law. And lawyers who might represent the whistleblowers also might be violating the law, right? This is meant to chill people who are shining the spotlight down upon the Biden crime family. Hunter's lawyers say, Hunty has cooperated fully with the IRS. He did so with the expectation that they would safeguard his information. But Hunty has learned to his detriment, that is not the case. Rather, IRS agents have targeted and they've sought to embarrass Mr. Biden via public statements in which they and their representatives have disclosed confidential info. While Biden has been the victim of various leaks about the IRS, most recently, because two absolute hero IRS whistleblowers who saved this entire operation, Mr. Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler, he says that they and their attorneys raised the stakes with their numerous public appearances and blatantly 
violated the IRS because they're engaging in a campaign to publicly smear Mr. Biden, suing the IRS because the whistleblowers are pointing out that there were problems with the investigation when they were literally on the team behind the investigation. Hunty's team says, this assault on Hunter's rights involved the public disclosure of his tax information in more than 20 televised and non-congressionally sanctioned interviews. So they went through and they said, oh, Shapley appeared on this one and Ziegler appeared on this one. With over 27 years of experience between them, Shapley and Ziegler knew that any person making any statement was in violation of federal tax law, right? So now they're saying they're public appearances. When Shapley is on that one news station, right? They're saying, up oh, violation. Yet these IRS agents and their attorneys willfully disregarded federal law and therefore their whistleblower status cannot hide them and protect them. They say a whistleblower is supposed to uncover government misconduct, not about a private person, which is exactly what they were doing, right? The whistleblowers, they're trying to make this like Hunter's this innocent person who has never been a government operator at all. And they're saying, well, the investigation by the government into him is what was corrupt. A whistleblower is supposed to uncover government misconduct, not the details about Hunter. Well, of course, like literally this sentence is entirely wrong. Of course, that's exactly what they're doing. They are blowing the whistle on the government. Beginning in April, Shapley's attorneys acting on Mr. Shapley's behalf made the rounds on various news outlets, including CBS and Fox News, to publicly disclose Mr. Biden's confidential tax return information. They went beyond disclosing the existence. In fact, he alleged that Biden's IRS investigation was an example of preferential treatment in politics improperly infecting decision makings, and Mr. Shapley had identified supposed anomalies in the process. Then, in days leading up to Shapley's testimony in front of the House, he agreed to another interview, right? They're saying, okay, that the stuff that he said to Congress was okay, but the stuff that he said to CBS is not okay. Shapley disclosed his confidential tax return info and other emails about this stuff. They're just walking us through the timeline here, and we're not going to read all of it, but you've got May and June 2023, Shapley and Ziegler, they finally testified in front of the House Ways and Means Committee. They say here, despite explicit reminders that there would be violations here, if they spoke, they did speak anyways. They say chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means, Congressman Jason Smith, proceeded in their public campaign to selectively disclose certain information and to harm Mr. Biden. And so look at all these people. They aired all of this stuff. Oh man, we're not even on the list here. Oh man. So they say that a lot of these clips were aired on a number of different networks. Fox News, CBS, Megyn Kelly, John Solomon, and interviews aired on CNN, Megyn Kelly Show, and John Solomon Reports. And watching The Watchers, hello, we've been covering this for months, man. During these interviews, Mr. Shapley and Mr. Ziegler provided unsubstantiated and selectively chosen allegations of nefarious and potentially criminal behavior. These disclosures went beyond confirming the existence, right? So they're saying they were just talking too much. And they were disclosing unsubstantiated allegations. They say counsel for Shapley and Ziegler rejoined the media circus and they were just disclosing new things. All right, so they're walking us through. Now we can fast forward through a lot of this. Here, new allegations. Also, talk to Jake Tapper. Also, disclosed that they recommended felony charges. So they were releasing new information about all of this. Mr. Biden, they say, disputes all of these allegations, but he suffered harm nonetheless. Oh no, Hunter has suffered reputationally and emotionally. Get your tissues out, my friends. It's about to get sad in here because their wrongful conduct has been staggering. This action seeks to force compliance with federal tax laws to stop the continued propagation of unsubstantiated allegations and the unlawful disclosure of Hunter's tax return information. Oh, poor Hunter. So, all right, now you see all the parties are here and the rest of this here, factual allegations. Hunter has been subjected to extraordinary scrutiny by the media. In the past year, that has escalated to unprecedented leaks by people at the IRS. The public statements began in April when they started working on the case, but despite clear warnings from Congress that they were prohibited from disclosing the contents, Shapley and Ziegler only emboldened their media campaign against Biden. And then they testified in front of the House of Representatives and numerous media outlets, including yours truly here, all communicated about all of that. And therefore, they have broken the law. On or around, they say Shapley sent a letter, and this is how the whole thing started. This was from the whistleblowers. They said that the whistleblowers reached out and said, hey, we've been investigating Hunter and there have been some pretty serious problems with this investigation. And again, they're walking us through the timeline. So we don't need to fast. We don't need to read all of this. You can see here on May 26, Shapley testified before the House Ways and Means Committee. They noted that they said it was confidential, but then information from there ultimately went out. Ziegler also testified and we'll fast forward through the rest of this and just 
see what they say they want. What do they want? Here, numerous disclosures went out, public statements on Ways and Means, John Solomon, CBS News, Fox News, CBS News, Fox News, CBS, John Solomon, the list goes on. Jake Tapper, Megyn Kelly, another one, Martha McCallum, Fox News, Caitlin Collins. Okay, here, let's just, all right, I'm feeling left out here. Let's put ours right here. Watching the Watchers, okay? On, let's say from 2020 to present, okay? How about that? All right, now I feel much better. Woo, all right. These statements publicly disclosed confidential tax return information, including whether the taxpayer's return was, is, or being, or will be examined or subject to other things, and they're letting them know about the existence of a Hunter investigation. The repeated disclosures were made not in good faith, but they just misinterpreted the law, right? They're not allowed to do this stuff. And so the IRS agents were responsible for it. Therefore, we've got different counts, a breach of the Privacy Act. Hunter's taxes should not have been disclosed. So we've got, looks like two counts only. And then Hunter wants the following. Declaring that the IRS willfully or unlawfully disclosed Hunter's tax return information in violation of the law. They want a declaration of that so that no more of this information can ever go out again, right? They want to stop the leak. And it is awarding Mr. Biden $1,000 in damages for each and every unauthorized disclosure of his tax return information subject to the disclosure under the law. <gasps> oh no. So they're going to charge us a thousand bucks for this. Oh man, that was kind of an expensive bullet point, wasn't it? That's all right. We'll be here. Send your bill. We'll see how that goes. IRS is an agency here, they say. And so this is something that Biden should be awarded attorney's fees for ordering the defendant, in this case, the IRS, to give Hunter all the documents and ordering the IRS to formulate and implement a data security plan <laughs> and award any interest and so on. And here signed as per usual by Abe Lowell signed counsel for Robert Hunter Biden. All right. So you see the gist of this is IRS whistleblowers. They blew the whistle. They talked a lot about it. They didn't like the talking. They say the talking was in violation of IRS rules and that there should be a thousand dollar damages for each one of these. So I think it would be like how much money, you know, I don't know what cracks going for, but probably it's a fairly significant amount of crack. Uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You throw ours in there. 16 grand about. Seemingly what he's asking for here, 16 grand in this lawsuit, plus interest, plus, you know, damages, attorney's fees are going to be way more than $16,000. Attorney's fees will be, I don't know, tens of thousands, you know, maybe a hundred grand by the time we're through with this case. But what do they care? Somebody else is paying for it, I'm sure. So this is the lawsuit. Now, Hunter, of course, is the first son and he's suing his daddy's own government because man, he's just like a giant man child who I think never grew up or something, but he's suing his daddy's own government. Now the house Republicans have a reaction to this. They said, this is what whistleblower intimidation looks like. We're wondering now if they're going to be possible charges, or maybe they should investigate Hunter and his lawyers for trying to threaten and intimidate the whistleblowers who are protected by the law. Notice how he is not refuting anything that the whistleblowers said, which is a good point. Something that they just said, well, the information leak, but not anything that they said was inaccurate. And so that was over from the House Republicans. We also saw that the whistleblowers responded to this. And I thought I had an oversight link too. We'll see if we have that. This is what the whistleblowers attorneys have said. The statement from Gary Shapley's legal team. They say, this suit against the IRS is just another frivolous smear by the Biden family attorneys trying to turn people's attention away from Hunter's own legal problems and to intimidate any current and future whistleblowers. The federal judge in Delaware who oversaw the aborted plea deal shot down similar claims against the whistleblowers after they exposed the secret backroom deal between Hunter and the DOJ. Federal judge in Delaware, Judge Norica, who already oversaw this, blew all that up already. What I'm guessing happened here is that when the deal went sour in Delaware, and we were here when that happened, there was a conversation behind closed doors where Hunter's lawyers came in and they blasted everybody. They said, this plea deal is illegal. Your whistleblowers have already violated our client's rights, blah, blah, blah. They brought the judge in on this. They said, judge, they've already violated our client's rights. You should dismiss all of this and so on. And she said, get out of here with that. Like probably hard no. And so the whistleblowers are communicating that. The judge already rejected this. Neither IRS SSA supervisory special agent, Gary Shapley, nor his attorneys have ever released any confidential taxpayer information except through whistleblower disclosures authorized by statute. Once Congress released that testimony, like every American,
American citizen, he has a right to discuss that public information. And so you can see this battle is heating up and it's pretty incredible that now Hunter's lawyers are suing in the district court of DC. Keep that in mind too, my friends. We are in the District of Columbia here, which is a very Biden friendly jurisdiction. They love that guy for some bizarre reason. I don't know what the deal is, but anybody who challenges their reign, challenges their power is facing an uphill battle in the District of Columbia. So of course he would sue there because it's a very favorable forum. He already starts, you know, on the five yard line. So this is what we see there. Now, whistleblowers have reacted. James Comer is also responding to this and he posted this in a recent interview. He says, they've gotten over 20 million in payments. We're going to follow the money. And in fact, we're going to take this all the way into Joe Biden and Hunter Biden's bank accounts. It's going to be something that they're not letting up on yet. Well, I think we've laid out the case, Larry. Everything you said was 100% accurate. Almost every fact that you stated wasn't known prior to us launching this investigation in January. All of those facts were learned through our investigation on the House Oversight Committee. Now this week, Speaker McCarthy granted us impeachment inquiry. And this is a very important tool in the toolbox. This will help us when we go to court to get some of these bank records. This will help force the judge to have to rule quicker. It also trumps executive privilege if the Bidens tried to say that anything that we were trying to get, they couldn't have because of executive privilege. And it also allows us to get things like grand jury testimony. Uh, there's a precedence where when Jerry Nadler was leading the impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump, they were requesting information and they said they couldn't hand it over because of it was grand jury testimony and the judge ruled because of the impeachment inquiry, then Nadler could then have it. So this is a tool that we needed to move forward. We're going next after two things. First of all, the bank accounts of oh. Hunter Biden and Jim Biden, because we believe, as you've seen the arrows where we show from countries like China, Romania, Russia, Ukraine, there's arrows through these shell companies. Then they end up in nine different Biden personal bank accounts. We want to look at the personal bank accounts to see if there are any arrows beyond that to pay for things of value for Joe Biden. Then the other thing we want to use impeachment inquiry is to force these agencies to turn over correspondence. We've requested all the emails that were in the pseudonyms, and there are 5,400 of those. We know one of which pertained to Ukrainian policy, and Hunter Biden was copied on it. So these are things that we need, and I believe with this new impeachment inquiry designation, we'll be able to get them much quicker. So I just want to... Uh, Fast forward and see what else. So it's unclear who the direct subpoena would be with. We're still evaluating that, but more than likely it'll be with to the bank for the bank records. We anticipate Abby Lowell and the big expensive legal team that the Bidens have that no one's ever yeah. said who's paying for their very expensive legal fees. Who is paying for them? That lawsuit was only asking for like $16,000 back in actual damages. $1,000 from each of the interviews and the conversation about Hunter's tax records. That letter probably cost $16,000 with these lawyers for crying out loud. Will fight us in court and what their original strategy would have been would be to tie it up in court forever and run the clock out. But with this new impeachment inquiry designation, it's going to force the judge to have to move much quicker than a normal ordinary case. I remember you uncovered the suspicious bank accounts in the Treasury right. Department. Is there, I mean, that was in some sense, you know, the first major breakthrough. But are you going to do more of that? And Chairman, I want to ask you, you know, in conjunction with the suspicious bank accounts, a lot of the banks, the, you know, private commercial banks, they themselves have filed suspicious accounts. And I just uh, wonder, are they helping you? Are they obstructing you? It sounds to me like they'd be happy to unburden themselves and show uh, all this stuff to you. The banks have been very helpful with the shell companies. Now we're getting into the personal Biden bank accounts. Uh, and right. we suspect that the lawyers have already warned the banks against handing anything over to us. But we're going to give the banks another chance and we'll see. Uh, withholding judgment on the banks, but thus far all the banks have been very cooperative and thus far 100% of the banks have turned over after they were subpoenaed all the information that we requested. All right, good news. So going after the shell companies has been something that was fruitful. They've got some good information from those, but now we want the personal records and we'll see what the banks do from there. So Congress continuing their inquiry into the financial aspects of the Biden crime family. Hunter just can't take it, man. So he's going to sue the IRS to try to snake his way out of this one as well. We'll continue to cover this, my friends. Thank you for subscribing and liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.